What on earth is going on at John Lewis? First, the UK's favourite department store started selling sex toys earlier this week. And now, in its in-house magazine, it's giving advice on breast binders for children. You heard that right. I'm joined now by the commentator and writer James Essers. James, welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure. This is a story that you broke that came to you. What on earth is going on? Share with GB News, please. I mean, what's gone on can only be described as a kind of diatribe of ideological propaganda from the upper echelons of John Lewis. Uh, they don't seem to give a damn about their workforce or indeed their customers or anyone who disagrees with them that a, a man can become a woman or that children should be given breast binders. I mean, it's really quite concerning. And the specific advice seems to, once again, have been shoehorned in to John Lewis by the mm. same old organisations, Stonewall and Mermaids. Is this an example, James, of yet another institution, yet another brand that's been captured by this trans ideology? And if so, why? Oh, completely. And, and they're quite proud of it. I mean, they make a whole song and dance about how well they fared in Stonewall's, uh, you know, employer ranking scheme and all the rest of it. You know, the fact that they're referring parents of quite vulnerable children towards an organisation, Mermaids, that's being investigated by the Charity Commission for safeguarding concerns really has to make you question what on earth is going on here. And I think really... It's not just shamelessly pursuing profit through virtue signalling, although I believe that's part of it. But I think part of it is simply that the, the senior management and John Lewis really believe this stuff. Uh, and that's even more concerning, actually, because it flies in the face of what we know to be reality. But, James, another thing that comes to the fore here is they, they're out of touch with reality, with their customer base. James, there's been a massive backlash to this. I noticed today on the Conservative websites, on Daily Telegraph, on the Daily Mail, mainstream newspapers, customers mm. were drawing their, their, their custom, their loyalty cars getting thrown in the bin. There seemed to be a bit of a backlash to this, James. I know. And you think they would take heed of that, but seemingly not. I mean, boycott John Lewis has been trending on, on Twitter. I've you know seen thousands of messages from customers saying they won't shop there anymore. I mean, I, I myself was a former customer. I enjoyed uh, you know frequenting Waitrose on a weekly basis. But I said to my wife, no more. You know, we cannot go there while they're pushing this type of nonsense on staff and, and customers. Um, but they don't seem to care. And the statement that they've put out in response to all of this is extremely defensive. They attempt to try and justify what they've done. Um, so I say we vote with our feet and, and hit them in the pocket where it's really going to hurt. But James, you know, from the top of the army, the navy, the home office, the Church of England, down to department stores, this now seems to be, James, a complete orthodoxy, a new ideology, a religion even, and it's omnipresent. No, I mean, com completely. Um, and, you know, part of the issue is that people feel far too afraid to question this. You know, I was contacted by a mother uh, of her son who just started working at John Lewis a few months ago. And on his second shift, uh, his kind of supervising staff member asked him where his pronoun badge was. Uh, and, and when he asked whether it was mandatory to wear one of these, the response was, well, no, it's not mandatory. But if you don't wear one, it's considered to be transphobic. So this is the type of fear of God that we are putting into people if they step out of line and dare to say things as controversial as a man cannot become a woman. Um, but that's kind of the fear that's being created out there, which is why people have to speak out and step up, because otherwise this simply is not going to change. I think you're right, James. And this this happens at my son's school when he was 13. Their teacher said, you need to put the pronouns on the front of your book. And my boy came home. He said, Daddy, what do I do? I said, well, what do you want to do? He said, well, I don't really want to do it, but I feel if I don't do it, I'll be labelled a transphobe and I'll be ostracised and I'll lose my friendship groups. And isn't that the problem, James, that even if people feel compelled or they feel this is wrong, they're simply too afraid to speak out? Well, well, of course, and the casualties are there to see. I mean, how many people have lost their jobs, uh, kicked off university courses? I mean, I myself have been a victim of this, you know, and then having to spend years in litigation on the basis of discrimination against their beliefs. Um, so, yes, but we, you know, we do have to kind of push back and turn the tide against this. But my biggest concern is for children. And that's why I really honed in on this comment around breast binders, because, I mean, what an abhorrent disgrace 
for a bunch of people who have no qualifications in medicine or therapy to be suggesting that the, you know, the answer to a young girl's disease in her body is to bind her breasts. I mean, it, it's an utter disgrace, actually. There are no other words for it. James, as I think many people will agree with you, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. And we do have that comment. A spokesperson for the John Lewis Partnership said they're a welcoming place for people to work or shop irrespective of their background or beliefs. The magazine was not edited or funded by the management of the John Lewis Partnership. 